AI literacy, data literacy, you know, helping people recognize that, you know, the skills they had when they were humans before AI existed in their world are still relevant and are actually more relevant now than they were before. Uh, the, the human skills don't go away just because AI is now a, a colleague or a collaborator. Those things are still relevant. I think in the future, though, you'll start seeing, and this is work that we're doing, really focused around helping people manifest and show up authentically in the workplace so that they can actually be well enough not to be running for the door when people tell them robots are going to take their job and that they are well enough to actually accommodate the change of major enterprise transformation. And you'll start th seeing things like the durable skills, that people used to be calling soft skills, if you will, being a major focus of large enterprise and also things like resiliency and flexibility and agility, not being just product teams and software development and data science, but the rank and file being able to accommodate everlasting change because, you know, having a transformation every once every 18 months will be the thing of the past. It'll be nonstop dynamic transformation and having a change muscle and being able to flex it on and off will be essential for every, every professional. Kind of to what Daniel was saying before too, uh, this is my spit on it, but there's, there's more individuals that use a cell phone than make the cell phone and making the cell phone is probably the more technical aspect of it. And then everyone else consumes it essentially same thing with AI. So in traditional higher education, some of the trends are it's becoming too expensive. It takes too long to do. Sometimes it's behind industry. So even if you do do it, you might not be up to standard, so to speak. Um, AI is going to be able to enhance all of those things. I think most, you know, traditional universities can start to focus on mastery and application versus memorization. Students are going to be able to learn more and more quickly so you can cover more in your curriculum. AI is going to unlock personalized learning um, that might make individuals more likely to stay or make their whatever they're learning more custom to them. And they're always going to have 24 seven support. I mean, if you're stuck on a problem set, you don't have to wait for office hours anymore. You can work with AI to try to figure it out, which means higher education is going to need to change how they offer their products. Maybe it's, you know, a problem set, the prompts I use, the outputs, me checking to make sure that that's correct, um, which is very different than it is today. Dude, super well said, Ben, you actually just triggered a thought for me too. Like, like one way that I think about this uh, is um, the spectrum of consume versus create, right? And it truly is a spectrum. On the consume side, particularly for business, uh, for me, this is really about translating tried and true known strategic frameworks that we've been using for a long time into, into the world of AI. I've got one quick example. Uh, as a product manager, like I've adopted a thought process uh, first created by uh, the R&D firm IDEO around thinking, categorizing like products into, you know, desirability, feasibility, and viability. And uh, uh, I've been working to translate that framework that IDEO created into thinking about it for like functional AI, like desirability is our user needs. To what degree does this need to work, right? Viability is our business goals and risks associated with it. Are we worried about privacy or hallucinations, right? And then feasibility, do we have the talent, the skill, is the tech there in order to enable this? And uh, that's one example of a framework that's been around for a long time that we need to translate and work with uh, uh, to get it to work with this new world of data science and AI. I think the, the thing that we'll notice most with the, um, the development of AI over the next few years is the emergence of genuine conversational interfaces. And by that, I mean interfaces which um, handle ambiguity and ha handle entrainment. Uh, much better. Uh, when today the, the idea of prompt engineering is in, in many ways extremely artificial. That's not the way human beings communicate. Our communication is entirely a process of disambiguation, um, and we have all our gestures and we have our disfluencies and and we're constantly our conversation is always about trying to clarify what the other person is saying and what our response to that is. And today, the idea that we have to craft a prompt in order to get a perfect answer, that's like writing a SQL query. That's, that's not the way it works. And if you remember back in the old Google, the days of things like, um, oh, Aldo Bonet, Lycos, Alta Vista, you used to search the web by 
basically creating queries. And then Google came along and said, no, just ask for anything. And we'll provide you with an experience that enables you to disambiguate that and browse it. And that's what's going to happen in AI. The idea that we have to craft a prompt in order to get the best response is inhuman. Um, it's literally inhuman. What we need to do is have a, dis a, a process that actually handles ambiguity a lot better. And that's genuine conversation. Donald, I love it. I, I, I love the conversational and the communications aspect of it, because I think you're right. The prompting is is very artificial. So as we as we look forward, though, one of the things that I, I always think about is is actually looking backward and learning from history. And, you know, Lotus one, two, three was one of the first spreadsheets and it it truly changed the world. It made data accessible and available to the layperson. It It made people and organizations and companies obsolete almost overnight. It sold hand over fist. And I think we're going to see the same type of thing here. So there's going to be one, two, a few um, very, very useful products that come out, tools, services, whatever it happens to be, that really changes the face of this. And, and um, I, I think we're going to see a future that follows the same patterns as Lotus 1, 2, 3, the internet, radio, television, the car, the industrial revolution, whatever it happens to be. Um, we're going to see a very similar pattern here.